Dustin here, Smoking Eagles Rod Shop, back with another video for you guys. Now, if you've missed the Elko, don't worry, we've missed it too. We've had a lot going on here lately, and it is time to get on it. And we are going to the next level. This is going to be Elko 6.0. That's right. We're not going 2.0, 3.0. We skip all that stuff. We're going straight to 6.0. Now, why is that, Jason? LS 6.0. That's right. He had a LS60 built specifically to do burnouts in this car at the burnout pad. So, two, three, four, five, shit, we don't need those. The bigger, the better. Like I always say, more is better. So, we got an engine transmission over here on the floor ready to go right in the Elko. We picked the hottest possible day to do this. It's like 120 degrees out, so we got the fan going back here. We're both sweating like pigs in a pig pit. Hey, let's do this. It's a $400 LS swap, so it shouldn't take us more than three, four hours to get yeah, this done. Cool. Um, you guys start the timer. We're gonna bring you with us. We're gonna show you all the problems we run into on the way. Luckily, we just gotta rip all this garbage out of here. And this small block 350 still runs. It will still do a rip and burnout, but. What a little workhorse. Yeah. I, I, I think it's taken us so long to get to the 6.0 because this little guy still does an amazing burnout. It just rips. It, it just, it, 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 you turn the key, it starts up, put it in gear, you smash gas, tires light. You need to find a van or something to put in this Ooh. thing so we can drive it around and go get groceries. We could tow the Elko with the Elko motor. There you go. And it's over it. Maybe we could get another Elko and make it a rollback. A rollback Elko, a Elko with an Elko on it. Dually, yeah. I'm full of terrible ideas, guys. Anyway. Dually Elko. I like the Dually Elko. Look at that. It's been two minutes and the bad ideas are just flowing. So the, the heat's getting to us. <laughs> We're gonna get on this swap. We're gonna take you guys with us. And yeah, maybe you'll learn something, maybe you won't. I'm sure we will. Yeah. Um, a fight or two, a bump knee, sprained ankle. Yeah. And uh yeah, we'll have this four hundred dollar LS swap done and ready to have fun. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so Here's what we got up here. This thing is, you know, Redneck Nation, which, you know, I'm used to. No big deal. Essentially, we don't need any of this stuff. So we're going to be pulling the radiator, the fan. So we got a little more room. We're going to pull the motor and tranny together because it's just easier that way. We got a lift here. So we're going to try and do everything on the top that we can do before we put it up on the lift. We'll unhook everything on the bottom. Then we're going to drop it back down. And then we're just going to slide this baby right out. Done this a bunch of times. At least I have. Jason, he works on the little stuff. It only takes one guy to move a motor. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and lucky for me, none of this stuff should be metric, or at least most of it. Unless Jason added something, I could just see that. I'm gonna put a metric bolt right here just so Duster has to hunt around and find a socket. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way Dustin's got a 10 millimeter. I've already lost it. <laughs> right. Anyway, guys, if you haven't seen the new LS motor, I'm not gonna show you yet right now. Hold on, you gotta wait. We're gonna slide this baby out and yeah, get on it. So I'll throw you up on the old uh, time lapse and we'll rip a bunch of this crap out of here. You guys have seen this all before, you know. We'll do the motor mounts and all that stuff. I love how rusty um, it is. Maybe from the bottom. Yeah, I like it, dude. Rusty right. and crusty and yep. we got the Chevy blue in there. We got Chevy orange in there. Yeah, and that's an aluminum intake, so they painted orange. We should have just painted that the rest of the way orange. <laughs> anyway. Valve covers on backwards, you know. Yeah. Chrome air cleaner, though. Yeah, well, I mean, that adds like, what, four horsepower? It's not as much as the Smoking Eagles Rod Shop sticker. Yeah. But, I mean, it's close. Here what kind go. of air cleaner did you get for that 6.0? I don't oh, know. don't tell us. Don't tell us. It's chrome. It's chrome? Yeah. It's shiny. It's shiny. Straight from China. It's that, it's that shiny China chrome. chrome. <laughs> Coming to a marketplace ad near <laughs> you. <laughs> don't lowball me. I know what I got. Yeah, don't lowball us. We know what we got. This thing will do a rip and burn out. Better than what you got. <laughs> Better than what you got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, this thing, this thing killed it. So if we take the the battery off we can take it here and then we can take it at the starter and then we just have like a couple of wires to cut yep. and then for coolant system we can take it off there and there we'll roll it back a little bit dump all the water right down the drain for gas we just have to come off right here for gas these are our uh, transmission coolers we're and not those... gonna we're not gonna reuse them 
and we're not going to use we're going to use a tranny cooler underneath it. We could cut them off, but I think they'll come out. We yeah, might those as well will just come take out. the bolts out. So we'll just take those and then, off. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, really, it's, we it's, don't have a whole heck of a lot to do. It's like we need seven to bolts. Pull the carburetor off, toss that back on the shelf because that's a good running carburetor. That's Slap the engine plate one. on it. Yeah, that's been a good one. Them Hollies, dude. Them Hollies will rip it. Yeah, that it, it was amazing, like how close it was. Yeah, it had it had that junk Edelbroke on there, and it wouldn't hardly run. And then yeah. we set the timing and slapped that Holly 600 on there, My and it's word. an absolute screamer. It went, yeah, it went from barely, it went from barely driving on a trailer to absolutely just a ripper. Yeah, you're like, we ought to pull this motor today. I'm like, just give me like an hour. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it was like that freaking. This motor did. For, it's it's a 350 man. It's the goat. For 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 as hard as we've beat the ever living tar out of this thing. It's 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 done its job. Look at that fancy blue flex fan. Yeah. That won't sit around here long before it ends up on something of mine. The garden tractor. <laughs> yeah, it'll be on a freaking garden tractor or my mailbox. <laughs> Just be like that fan looks familiar. Huh? I never seen it before. <laughs> I don't I don't recall ever seeing that before. <laughs> Come over uh, here. Look. All right, guys, well, I better put this camera down, quit wandering around like a fool. Just draining the old fuel cell there because there's no sense in leaving a fuel cell in the back that we're not going to use. And uh, yeah, when uh, somebody has to get around to messing with it, there's no sense in having a bunch of gas hanging out in it. Um, just easier this way. We'll pour that in a lawnmower, a weed whacker, or a, I don't know, a mini bike or something. Looks like that just finished up. We got our headers off of here. We got motor mount bolts out. As you can see, no radiator fan, any of that fun stuff. We got all the wiring unhooked. Jason got the starter unhooked over here. We get the carburetor off. We got a pull plate on it. We're pretty much ready. We got the distributor cap off. You can pull the distributor if you really want to be safe, but you don't really have to. Um, just pulling the cap off and getting the wires out of the way. You've got enough room there to tilt this baby and berth it. Um, we're going to run this up in the air do everything on the bottom which isn't a whole lot we've got the drive shaft and the transmission cross member we'll take all the bolts and stuff out of that and just leave it on there and we'll lower the uh, car back down we'll hook onto the engine and then we'll put a little jack floor jack underneath the back of the tail of the tranny we'll lift the weight off that pull the mount out drop the transmission down shoehorn it out I mean, I could explain it all day or we could just do it. So that's where we're going to go. That's what we're going to do. We'll toss this thing in the air. We'll meet you guys underneath the car. All right, guys, we got her up in the air. Check that out. It's a lot of rubber built up. We on got there. a lot of rubber build up in here. We've never cleaned anything out from this. I've cleaned Carmen quite a few times, but yeah, we've never been there. We've never <laughs> look. It's almost doing its own body work. It, another what two seasons, and it's like those rear quarters will just be fixed. Yeah, I mean it is thick up under here. Look at this spot back here. It's like a solid like it's like <laughs> a freaking solid edge. That's Why awesome. Work? Hey, you think we should package that up for the people? I don't you guys, know. You guys want some packaged rubber? Elko 6.0 rubber jars. Check out this cool light on a stand, guys. Isn't that freaking handy? Yeah, if you haven't seen my short, go check it out. It works really good. Yeah, that's You can move it anywhere you want. 
Check out the... Of course, you could buy a $100 tripod set up, but... Check out the cool uh, aluminum drive shaft. Probably the nicest thing on the car. Got a drive shaft loop after we bounced one <laughs> off of the off of the inside of the car. Yeah, look, yeah. that's the damage that happened when we hucked the drive shaft. If you haven't seen that video, you should go check it out. Yeah, look at back. Yeah, back here's a big old digger. Oh yeah, whamboed right there too. Yeah, that's a big old whamboed. He tried to come and get you. Yeah. It was grumpy. Might need to knock that up in there a little bit while Oh, it's fixed. Quit messing with it. It ain't broke, Jason. Yeah, just don't step there. Well, you know, yeah. no, nobody rides in the back seat. Okay. So, to get this out, obviously we've got this transmission mount, cross yeah. member here. We need to take that loose. We'll take all the bolts out so that it's nice and loose and can slide right out. We'll pull the drive shaft, we'll pull the drive shaft loop, and we need to pull these transmission lines off of here. We need to pull this kick down cable um, at least get it down out of wherever it is. Probably just cut it off because yeah. I don't know. Nobody's ever going to use that again. Um, probably need to pull this uh, blanket. puke blanket off of here. Linkage. And yeah, pull the linkage off that side of the transmission there. Other than that, then we can drop her down and we can start pulling this thing out of here. Close. But if you want to see the weak link, remember Dustin called the last one. Oh, and yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm is... calling this one. Yeah, this, this rear end is going to get broken, guys. Like, we are going to break an axle, guaranteed, on this thing. An axle or, yeah, some, axle. something bad's going to happen. <laughs> We're breaking axle. Dude, this little pumpkin needs to be smoking a cigarette because it's about... <laughs> yeah, it's... it's <laughs> we should be feeding it its last meal right now, getting its last smoke. <laughs> you know, right after you have a really good time and you have that smoke, <laughs> it's going to be getting it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, guys, we'll get you on the time lapse. We'll get ripping these last few things out of here so we can start uh, pulling this engine out. All right, guys, so we're in here working on this transmission cross mount, and we knew it was kind of sketchy, but we didn't know how sketchy, so we just usually kept our eyes closed. Yeah. This side over here was welded on. Um, when they put this 350 small block in here, they obviously use this 350 tranny, and um, yeah, they welded this all on here, the piece of angle iron you can see, but this is not the sketchy side. I mean, it's kind of sketchy. You can see there's no gap here, and this little piece of angle iron is the only thing holding this side. Over here, we've got one bolt. The other bolt is completely missing. And, and you wonder why? Hole. Well, you see this plate steel here? It's kind of fixing the giant rot hole in this transmission cross member. And they even put a bolt in this hole and plugged it. Yeah. You know, to fix that oncoming rust. You know, that's a rust preventative there. So, yeah. I never claimed to be a good welder, but I think I'm better than this guy. I think the something was here. So this is a heat shield. So the that's catalytic a heat shield. Yeah, that's where the cat, cat. and the muffler. And so all they probably are. had a bunch of heat in here, and it would just condensate and rust stuff because that's where the floor is the rustiest too. Yeah. How many burnouts have we done with this thing with one bolt on this side and these booger welds? So when yeah. you see that guy online talking trash about your welds or somebody else's welds, this keep your opinions to yourself, cause. Them babies will hold. Yeah, they'll hold. Even a bad well will hold. That's right. Do we want to... Looks ain't everything. Get that guy? Yep, speedo cable. Pull the speedo cable. And I picked my tranny plug on the first try. Man, everybody loves Fit a good right tranny in. plug. Yeah. I knew exactly what size it needed. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're gonna get these transmission lines off of here. I'll get working on it. I just wanted to take a second and show you yeah, guys just some this, this cross member here. Get it, get it from like this angle because we I can mean, just it's, really it's, laugh. It's beautiful. Guys. We can really just laugh at it together. It's beautiful. <laughs> you okay. didn't even try to weld this whole side. It's just like all mangled in there. Oh my gosh! I think I it's found great. a metric bolt. Yeah. Well. 
he told me a half inch was a 9 16 and that's what I got for trusting him. <laughs> it took the bolt off, didn't it? It took it off. <laughs> it jammed it in the socket yeah. for about. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to get off the cutoff wheel because we're going to have to do some cutting to get this uh, loose at least. And uh, yeah. All right, guys, so we got everything unhooked under here except for the transmission cross member. It's actually welded to the frame on both sides. So our it's game awesome. plan is we're going to drop the car down on the ground. We're going to put a um, jack underneath the pan of the tranny, lift it up just ever so slightly, take a sawzall and just cut this off. Um, this bracket's junk. And then we'll be able to let it down and jerk this motor right out of here. Um, just saves us from fighting with a couple of bolts that if they were there, you know they'd be all rusty and crusty. Yeah. And we'd be fighting them anyway. So we're just going to hack them off. Then we'll run the car back up in the air. Then we can clean up whatever we got to clean up, figure out how the new mount's going to go. Yeah. It's all... Those are all future Jason problems. So, um, down Periscope. Down Periscope. All right, guys, so what we did is uh, run the lift up just on the front of the car. So it only lifted the front. And I just laid down beside here. I always put my jack stands under it and set it down so the weight's on the jack stands, not on the cable of the lift. because. You gotta be on a lock or you ain't safe. And then I just cut both sides of that transmission cross member out with the weight sitting on this jack. Then I just dropped the jack down and then we just pulled our jack stands out and just lowered the lift and she popped right out. Now Jason's just running her up in the air. We got a long way to go to clear that and just start sliding her back and sliding the car back and doing the Advance. The move, the move and jive. We got just enough room in the back and just enough room in the front, okay, to make this happen. No, let it pull the car forward and then we'll push the car back. You're gonna have to look at that yeah, Just let it all come forward. Okay, now what? Yep, push the car back. Perfect. I got room, right? Boom. Boom. It's that easy, kids. All right, guys. So we got that motor out, and here is the big reveal. Dun, 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 dun. So here's where we were. And here's where we're going. Just a little upgrade. So as you can see, you don't know the difference. That's turbo 350, this is turbo 400. It's bigger, beefier, better in every way. Um, obviously, 6LLS. And it's far from stock 6LLS and uh, stock 74-ish, 73, um, small block Chevy. Um, it's a 350 at least, you know, it's the GOAT. You seen what we did before? Just wait till you see where we're going now. And like Jason likes to look at, check this out guys. You see that? Straight down to the valves. This thing is gonna be rowdy. <laughs> it is so cool. But pizza just showed up. So, I think we're going to grab a little bit of food so that we're fat and we don't want to actually do anything else. And then we've got a little more work to do down in here as far as just cleaning some things up and figuring out the transmission mounts um, underneath the car. I need to clean that up since I just hacked them off with the Sawzall. And then it'll be about time to stab this motor in there and see what it all looks like. All right, guys, so Jason cleaned up a few things off of the old frame rails there that he doesn't want. And uh, now he's working on the old motor mounts there. 
Only four holes out of the 37 on each side line up with the new mounts that he bought. So as long as those are the correct mounts, should be good to go. Um, yeah, we're going to slap all know, the nuts on there. If you know that I'm wrong right now, please comment below. Yeah. And let us know before we go any further. <laughs> <laughs> please. Anyway. Please. Uh, yeah. So we'll just keep on keeping on. It won't be long. We'll be stabbing that thing in here. We do still have to run this up in the air, though, and figure out the transmission mount thing, but right now, this is where we're at. This looks reasonable. This is the path forward at the moment. All right, guys, so here's what we got in here. As you can see, that's where I whacked her off. <laughs> Look what came out and, of this uh, side over here. Ooh, yeah. These look like little rabbit pellets. Um, so, got to get this bolt out of here, get this bracket off, and then this side's actually in pretty good shape, so that I've chosen this side to tackle. <laughs> Jason's side over here, it's uh, welded onto the body here. Yeah. The bolts are in there, but uh, yeah, there's nowhere up above, really. Yeah. Um, so that's why this side looks way easier, and I gave it to him. Yeah. So, uh... Look at that. It's turning right there. It's going to come right out. No, it's that turning. Look, that, that looks great. It's so anyway, guys, I'll put you back on time lapse so you can't hear Jason um, really, you know, uh, what words am I looking for there? Encouraging that hardware to release itself. Yeah. And uh, I'll get working on this. I thought guys my side came right off and now Jason hacked all that crap off of there and there's this big rubber I don't know dampener suspension type thing on there I don't know probably keeps transmission vibrations out of the cab so you get that sweet sweet ride rolling down the highway but we don't need that anymore we need to get to the nut that's mashed down inside that rubber so um, one trick with this rubber stuff if you make heat it just melts and smells terrible. So the trick is get you a big old air hammer with a chisel or a couple other things. I'll end up cutting that bolt clean off and then it'll all fall right out of there. Working its magic. As long as I don't go right through the floor with this. Okay, now I need a razor blade to cut this rubber. Oh. Hey, there we go. That's gonna shoot down out of there and hit me in the head for sure. One half of the rubber. That's not good. Yeah. Glad I found out now. But uh, yeah, not often. There. Now you can just cut that clean off of there. Yeah. Wherever the slice and dice wheel went. Right here. And that's not mangled up too bad. It's just, this side's all rotted out anyway. Yeah, it is, it is. All right, guys, so I think we're ready to drop this motor and tranny in here. This is the old uh, universal transmission cross member bracket that Jason got. It's supposed to accommodate, I don't know, Ford motors, Hellcat motor. You want to bowl it in uh, G body, it'll fit apparently. Yeah, 87 holes of adjustment. 80, yeah, 80 million holes of adjustment. And then, of course, if some of those don't line up, you just drill them out. Yeah, we'll just weld it on. Or just weld it. You yeah. know, it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I wanted to show you guys kind of how that works. That's um, probably not supposed to do the Ford and Dodge thing like I was joking around with, but 
It's supposed to accommodate all like LS, turbo 400, turbo 350 type yeah. stuffages. So you can stuff whatever you want in one of these things. But really um, cool kit. Yeah. We're going to drop it down. Looks pretty simple, pretty easy. And we're going to drop this thing down and start stabbing this motor. So stay tuned. And right now, this is the point where if we start breaking shit, it starts really hurting. Yeah. Jason's pocket book. Pocket books. <laughs> this is where pocket books get hurt. Yep. But man, does that look cool. It's going to look way more cooler swinging six feet off the ground. There you go. We did have to put a helicoil in there. Thank you, Dustin. The other side already had one, so I just made it match. But yeah, I had know. one laying over here on the bench, so got lucky. Yep. That's gonna be cool. And Let's it wasn't it. metric, it was standard. Let's do it. <laughs> That's not the problem with it, it was metric. Yeah. That's why it stripped out. Yeah. We got her lined up. That's exactly what it's gonna look like, except it's gonna go right into there. We're not gonna have any problems with the motor mounts lining up or transmission mounts or anything like that. Um, contrary to popular belief, this is gonna be super simple. And uh, yeah, the $400 LS swap is almost complete. Yep. I'm gonna get you guys up on the tripod so you can watch it live action. And then I'll just edit out any of the boring stuff yeah. like where we're not fighting and throwing stuff at each other. And action! Can we do it in 20 minutes? This is taking forever, Jason. You should pump faster. <laughs> we are eight hours into our four hour LS swap. <laughs> you mean $400. Was it $400 or four hours? It only takes one weekend. This motor will be running. One weekend a month, six weekends a year. You can have an LS swap car that doesn't run. <laughs> That only needs $4,000 worth of wiring. Yeah. It's cheaper than divorce. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. No. When it hits the car, and I'll just move the thing. There you go. Okay, keep going in. Keep going in. Keep going in. Okay, so now we can start moving the push, car. Push the, the leg. Oh, the leg. Yeah. 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 Nervous? No. Yeah. Oh, I guess it doesn't really need to lay it higher. No, that's good. Alright, start bringing her down slowly. Okay. Keep her sliding in. Keep her sliding down. Just fitting right in. Like the glove, woo! Let her down a little more. Hold on, you're hung up on that. Hung up on the. Yeah, you're hung up on that lip down there. Whoa, there you go. You might. Oh, we may have needed to bang that up with the hammer first. We'll find out. Keep going. It's looking good so far. Of course, nothing crazy has happened yet. Back. Yeah, it needs to go back a mile, but yeah, we'll just pull the car. We need to go back at the minute. So I need to get that. I got an oil pan that's hidden on this side. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, we need to lift. We need to lift the tail of the train up. Yeah. Cool. So slide this this way. That's good. All right, I'll go to the back end and I'll start pump, pump, pumping it up. And that should bring that up and start leveling that out. And then you should be able to start getting some clearance to drop down. Clearance, clearance. Yep. If I scream a blood curdling scream, yeah, it means that you might want to go up. I don't know. Do something differently from whatever you're doing. Well, figure it out. On the fly. What's up? Uh, I got an easy job. I just need to lay here. Yeah. Simple directions. Up, down. I'm looking like I'm going to hit my damn 
I look like I'm gonna hit my brake lines on both sides. Like I don't have enough oil pan clearance. Can you go up? Yeah, I can go up. Up. Up, up, up. Up, up, up. Okay. You in a good spot? Yep, I'm fine. I need to go back about a half an inch. Yep, looks like it. And I'm kind of in a bind on soon. It's getting real tight. Yeah, I think it's that firewall. I think we need to pound that in. Okay, I just dropped it down. Yep, it looks like it cleared. Yep. I think Is it on the motor mount? Nope, but it's about to be. Yeah, right there. Push a little more. One more, one more, one more. There it's on, dude. There it goes. Give me a second. Okay. Oh, I wish you could go tap it in. Now we need to go down more. Just a little bit. Down's harder. Boy. There you go. There you go. In like Flynn. Whoever Flynn is, he's in. Look at that. Neither of us even got in a fight with any power tools or each other. Look at that, looking good. Now, I know what you're thinking, Dustin, the transmission mount's not even in. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> we'll fight about that here in a few minutes, but yeah. that looks cool. That looks cool. All right, so we got her back up in the air. And uh, yeah, if you wanna know how we did that, all we did was while it was on the ground, we had the motor in it and all that fun stuff. I put a jack right here on the pan Lifted it up just enough we could slide this bracket in, and we got a bolt started on each side. I think we had two on one side, one on the other. It's kind of precarious to get to um, with it sitting on the ground because it's super low. But uh, got those in, and then set the weight of the transmission on the cross member. We ran this baby up in the air, and then we just took uh, another one of my hoist jacks, put it on the pan here, lifted the tranny up just a little bit, and then figured out all our bolts. Got everything all lined up, tightened it all up, everything fit like a glove. And then, uh, yeah, we figured out our spacing here. Nobody really told us how to do that, so we just um, guessed. And uh, I told Jason my uh, professional opinion was to try and get the transmission pan kind of level with the bottom of the car frame rail here. Um, I think that's kind of how they are stock, as you can see. It looks pretty square. I mean, of course, I can caddy want us the camera to make it look like whatever i want so that's perfect looks great we want three shims out of however many they gave us five or something so good to go now jason's doing his torque converter bolts uh they're supposed to be 40 i don't know we read on the line it's 35 to 44 foot pounds or something and uh my torque wrench won't fit in there so he's just you know ugga dugs get giving her all the tafs that he's got and uh that's gonna be good enough if it's not i'll always say hey i told you to tighten that a little tighter um or we could blame it on the fact that there's no dust cover <laughs> anyway guys um yeah we're getting her knocked out not bad for about six seven hours worth of work on a saturday motor out motor in things all bolted up 400 ls swap 400 ls swap you know, if you'd have spent more money, this had been a little bit quicker. Yeah, we got it done in three hours. We could have got it done in three hours, you know. But uh, And if you want to know why they call it a $400 LS swap, it's because that's how much you have to pay your buddy to help you do it. Yeah. Wink, wink. <laughs> yep. Anyway, guys, uh, yeah, we're knocking it out. What's next, Jason? What else is on the agenda for this? A shifter. Shifter? I don't know what else, you, other parts and fun stuff you Ooh, got. We got some headers we can slap on it quick. Headers, see if they fit? Yeah. See if the headers fit? Yeah, because headers would look cool on it right now. Yeah, they would. Hey, you want to sh let, let's show them. Well, we, let's get it on the ground yeah, first. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get it on the ground, then we'll show them the headers and see if they fit. 
We'll be right back. Intermission. What do you think? Does it look cool or what? The boosty master cylinder thingy got in the way. Yeah, so over here on the driver's side, we were gonna put that one on. It kind of, the booster gets in the way. I suggested doing the header pipe trick on it and just beating the hell out of the side of the booster. But Jason said he didn't like that idea. So um, I think the plan is to boost, boost delete, delete it and because it's a burnout car, kind of the game plan we were kind of kicking around in our heads was to go with a standard type uh, master cylinder for a non-boosted um, brake system and then run one line to each front brake versus front and back. Um, and that should maximize his braking capabilities in the old burnout pit. If but we're, if no, we're that's wrong, just us kicking some ideas if around. If we're wrong, put it in the comments below why we're wrong. Yeah. Because we're not, we just threw that out there. We've it was a five here. second I Well, we were kicking it around a little bit, just kind of like looking we, at it. We've been out here for eight hours. We've been smelling gas fumes all day. We could be completely. It was all Jason's idea. Okay, put it in the comments <laughs> below. Is that a good idea to use a, a, a dual master cylinder and one per each front brake? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's anyway, guys, this is what we got. It took us about seven, eight hours, and we pulled the small block and the, and the 350 turbo trans out of the Elk Hill. We got the LS in, we got the motor mounts in, we got the transmission mount all swapped over. We got flex plate. Flex plate. Every, I mean, Torque everything's all pulled it together. It's, it's ready to go. It's ready for wiring and all the you know stuff yeah. Jason needs to do at his place. We've done everything it's here it's that ready. he can't do. Yeah, it's ready for hoses, belts, and wires. Yeah. Hoses, belts, and wires. And that's all on you, bud. Yep. That's all on you. Next time I see this thing, I want it lighting, fires, and popping tires. And we're gonna be testing it right out here in front of the shop would be my assumption, because the little town of uh, Napanee. Napanee, they may not like him they frown uh, upon. doing burnout practices in the, uh, yep. it spooks the horses, let's just put it that way. And uh, confuses, confuses the Amish. If anybody knows where we can get a cheap Fox body hatchback, we've got an, a small block Chevy yeah. that's half wore out that would really speed that thing up. Yeah. <laughs> so much room for activities in Yeah. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're super stoked, as stoked as we are, about the Elko 6.0 and where this project is about to take us all as a group. Because don't forget, you're a part of the team couldn't do this without you guys. We really appreciate all your support. I'll put some other videos around my melon here of all the crazy stuff we're doing around the shop. And it's not always car stuff. Sometimes I'll work on boats, boats and go fishing. And sometimes it's a lawnmower or a mini bike. So just keep your eyes out for our next video. And yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next one. And until then, keep on wrenching. Peace.